we'll close this out. And we'll jump into Photoshop is where we're working at. By the way, if you're working in Photoshop, and you can see I've got a variety of palettes open, sometimes people will close out palettes like if you can't find your tools or things are being moved around. Here's how to reset your work area. You can always go to Window, down to Workspace, and we're working in the default, the Essentials palette. If I choose Reset Essentials, this will put everything kind of back into place. I've got my tools back over here. I can then open them back up to here. I've even got my palettes on this side. So if you can never find something, it's usually under the Windows palette is where you'll be able to find those. In doing photo restoration, there's no step-by-step uh, -step instructions I can give you. What I'm going to show you are just a variety of techniques and a variety of tools and what they do. And then it's kind of on you to figure out how you want to, to work through something. So let me show you one of these first ones. Here's kind of an easy thing to do. Uh, I'm going to do the Rebuild RGB. First of all, to open it up, notice what I'm doing. I can click and I can drag it down to Photoshop kind of the way we did the last one. And it'll open up in its own little window. Remember, you can drag this window around or you can click down at the very bottom right hand corner and that'll give you a little bit more space. Everything that we're doing is working in side of this one. So, what problems do you see with this photograph? I see two things right off the bat. Edge is missing, Edge is missing and it's too light, exactly. So, I'm going to work with the, uh, the, the lightness of it. Uh, to use an artistic term, it has very low contrast. Uh, when I think of contrast, I think of things that are very, very different. In this case, the light and the dark, right? Uh, if I was to look at this, I see I've got mostly just light, light grays on here. I don't have any true blacks. I don't have any true whites except for this upper area. So the first thing I'll do is do what's called a levels adjustment. Levels tells me how many, what's my levels of light and dark. So to find this, and this is on your second page of your little handout, probably on the back page of your first one, I can go to, uh, uh, yeah, making your photos pop by adjusting the levels. You can find this under image and adjustments. Most of the things we're going to be doing will be found under this image drop down menu. And the adjustments are different things that I can do to it. So I can adjust the brightness and contrast, that's one way. Levels is the way I like to do it. Curves and exposure tend to do the same thing as well. But I'm going to open up Levels Adjustment Palette. So here's the next fancy thing that you're going to learn. What you're seeing here is called a histogram. A histogram is the computer's way of cataloging how many dark areas and how many light areas you have. And it usually shows up on this kind of mountain range type area. So if I've got a mountain range all the way on this side, that means I've got a lot of light areas, right? Because you can see it's higher on this end. Very, very low on the dark areas. With the histogram, I can use these arrows to readjust where the starting and stopping point is. And this is what I mean. Um, make sure preview is checked off. Watch what happens when I adjust these arrows. I'm going to bring it in. I've adjusted my dark point to it. What happened to it? Got darker, exactly. What do you think if I adjust my light point? It's going to get lighter. So I can bring this inward. Now I've got a better contrast. I've got dark darks and light light areas. This middle one is also your midtones of grays. So I can readjust those to taste from there. Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Very, very quickly. So I'm going to hit OK to lock it in. Here it was before, here it is after much much better photograph and all I had to do was adjust my levels to make it pop out to do that. I'm going to undo it one more time so I'm going to edit and undo levels. So that was kind of the the quick or excuse me the slow way of doing it the doing adjustment and levels. I can do an auto tone or an auto contrast and the computer will do the same thing for me. So if I choose auto contrast automatically it chooses where it thinks the light and dark point is. Now let's check out our histogram and see if it made the changes to that. Perfect. Eh, almost perfect. It spread things out. I still think you can make things a little bit lighter and a little bit darker. Notice where I'm pulling my points to. See where the start and the end of the quote mountain is? That's where you would want these edges to start and stop. If it was over here, it's a little, still a little too light. If I keep dragging in, obviously it's going to get way, way too dark. 
So that's what your histogram allows you to do when taking a photograph and when uh, working with a photograph. How many of y'all have a digital camera, a fancy digital camera that shows something like this? Do you ever know what that was for? That's what it's showing you. If you ever have one on your, your camera, it's showing you the lights and darks of a, of a photograph that you're taking. Pay attention to where that mountain range is and it'll tell you if the image is too light or too dark. And that's what we're working with from here. We'll say okay. And I'll say that's, that's a good one from there. Next thing to do, <clears throat> how can I get rid of this little spot up here at the top? Well, this is where we're going to start using some of our newer tools to work with. All the tools that we're going to use are going to be found in this middle section, uh, particularly on this middle right-hand side. I will also use our dodge and burn that's on the left side. But the majority of them are the spot healing, healing brush, patch, content wear. All of these tend to do uh, things a little bit different. There's also our clone stamp. Uh, we're not going to use the eraser. We're not going to erase away things. But you can blur areas or you can dodge and burn. And I'll show you what those do differently. I'm going to use my clone stamp first. The clone stamp allows me to copy areas from one area and paste it or paint it into this area. So if I wanted to, I could choose just my regular brush tool and maybe I'll pick a color that's gray right here. And with my regular brush, if I started to brush in there, what's kind of wrong with that? It looks okay. It's too solid. Too solid, exactly. Uh, my photograph has a lot of this texture to it, and if I tried to paint that in there, it would be very difficult just to use a paint. So I'm going to undo that. This is where the clone stamp allows, uh, what it allows me to do. Clone stamp works just like a brush, and if you don't see it, it's hiding under the pattern clone stamp. We're going to use the regular one just like a brush so at the top I can adjust my brush size I can choose different styles I can even change the hardness of it I'm gonna keep mine really soft make it pretty big I can even adjust the opacity of it and remember if the opacity is at hundred percent I get hundred percent of whatever I'm painting with if I was to just click now it's gonna give me a warning saying oops you can't use it because you need to select an area option click is the thing to remember about using the clone stamp so I want to copy some of this pattern. Hold down your option key and watch my cursor change. I get a little crosshair. When I click now, I'm telling my computer to copy this area. Now check out my cursor when I move it. You see how it's kind of giving me that um, pattern is following me? I can click and drag and paint in that particular area on that side. Pretty cool. It blends in a lot more. Now if I keep dragging, you can see the little other crosshair, it's following it. It will start copying other areas, so be careful that you don't undo that. I'll Command Z, undo that. And it may take you several instances to, uh, to recopy. So if I wanted to get this bottom edge, hold on Option and click. Keep painting. I can even go over to this corner here. Option, click, and keep painting from there. Have a good weekend. And I can fix up that particular area. All good for there. So for this particular photograph, that's what I'm looking for. Can you adjust the levels? Can you uh, take out any little extra spots that are on there? That's an easy one. So I'm going to close this one out. When you, do, when you are finished, you can save it and just save it as a regular JPEG. That'll close out for that one. Let's take out one that's, uh, let's do the red cast one. Now this one actually has the same problem that the other one does, but it's in a red color. Obviously too red, right? She's like a tomato. So if I wanted to adjust this, I can use my levels to change this up as well. So let's check out my levels, my histogram. Adjustment, levels. So you can see my lights and darks. Is there any problem with these lights and darks? It's got a good little distribution, right? Instead, right now I'm looking at all of my colors on here. Red, green, and blue channels. I'm going to change my channel up to just a red channel. Do you see a problem now? Yeah. Way too many reds. So if I was to readjust it, check out my picture now. It readjusts the color that needed to be for that one. And I can even change up my other colors. Maybe green is off by a little bit. Yeah, I can readjust that one. And even my blue channel. So if you have a black and white photograph, you can adjust just the blacks and whites, but if you have a full color, change whatever channel you're working in, red, green, or blue. We'll say okay. So here's before and here's after. 
all cool for that one. Now this one does have a bunch of little scratches. I'll get into how to fix those very quickly with that one. But you're adjusting the, uh, the color of this for that one. I won't even save that. Let's try that auto change for this yellow one. Open it up. Obviously way too yellow. I could go to my levels adjustments. And remember I can change up my channel. Or let's try some auto. Auto tone gets it pretty close. Let's try the contrast and color. Contrast didn't do anything. Color, color got it a lot closer from there as well. Now with this one, I am losing a lot of the color. You know, this needs to be a little bit more uh, green in my opinion. I could easily pop out some of the red. This is where your other adjustments tend to come in handy. Your, uh, your hue or your vibrance of your colors is where you can pull things up. And maybe I can, uh, let's see, pull up some saturation. That look a lot better mm -hmm. as far as colors go. Now, if I go too far with it, it'll completely blow it out and it'll look something like this. Maybe that's what you want, but this looks a lot more natural with what I've got from there. Am I going too quick? Make, make sense? Very, very easy, simple things to do just for, uh, just for the adjustments of the area I'm working on. Okay, now let's get more complex. Let's start using some of the other tools that we're working with. How would I fix something like this? Drag that into Photoshop. Make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> By the way, if you need to zoom in on an area, if you haven't found it already, you do have a little magnifying glass. You can either click and drag and zoom into an area, or you can just click once and that'll zoom in for that one. If you need to zoom out, the Option key, when I click, will zoom out for that area. So if I was looking at this one, what do you think? Is this um, too dark or too light? I think it's too dark too. So let's do a levels adjustment real quick. Yeah, obviously everything's down on the dark end here. Maybe even adjust this one. So that looks a little bit better. There's before, there's after. Let's get rid of some of these lines. I'm gonna zoom in. Let's do the one across, across his face. We'll readjust for that one. So for this line, I could use my clone stamp and I could use a small sized area. Remember, I need to hold down my option key to select an area, click once, and then I can click and drag over that particular area. However, when I start getting on top of his face, it's a little bit more complex. I'll actually start shading him away. So I'm gonna undo that. Here's another tool that tends to work a whole lot faster. It does the same thing. And this is gonna be your spot healing tool. With the spot healing tool, I can click over the area that I want, and you can see it starts to get darker. I'm telling the computer this is the area that I want to change up. Now, as long as I hold down my, my mouse key, it won't do anything. But when I let go, Photoshop is going to look for the pixels that are around my area that I just highlighted, and we'll let go and automatically fill it in. Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. This works really well if I go over his face. So certain areas I definitely don't want to do, certain areas I want to keep. So that didn't copy any pixels that I didn't want. Now this can get in trouble. Let's see if I can go over her face and quickly heal that out. One click, automatically got it. If I want to get rid of that little spot there, pretty good. It still is missing just a little bit. It's never 100% perfect. But if you're taking a photograph and you've got a pimple you want to get rid of, Spot Healing Brush is your friend, right? That's, this is the one that you would use. Click, you can drag over it, and it does a pretty good job of blending in those particular areas. If I made my brush a lot bigger, oops, oh, come on, there we go. I can go over larger areas and I will quickly get rid of those or I can just click once and that'll fill in and get rid of all of those little spots. Now if I do go over something, let's see how well it'll work on this one. Click and drag. Ah, see how it picked up a little bit of her shoulder? I'll undo that. Photoshop was looking at the pixels that were around that area and it said, hey, there's a shoulder that's right there and it just copy those. Now this time it didn't do it. So sometimes you may have to go back over it more than once 
to be able to, uh, to get it working really, really well. Let's see if I can get another harder area. Now let's see if I can take out this whole face. Something like that tends <laughs> to happen as well. You can have a lot of fun doing this. Um, quote, back in the olden days, back when I first was learning Photoshop, we didn't have this tool, and all we had was the clone stamp. It would have taken forever to get the right clone stamp size, try to find the right pixels, and have to, uh, to match everything up. So using the spot healing brush tends to work out really, really well for large areas like that. Now you can see there it picked up part of her hair. If that does happen, if it's obviously just going to... Uh, to get an area, this is where the other healing brush, the regular healing brush comes in. Regular healing allows you to select an area that you want. Let's make this brush a lot smaller. So this one works kind of like the clone stamp. What do we hold down for the clone stamp to select an area? Option, Option key. See if y'all are paying attention. I want to copy this area. Option, select it. I can paint over that area and it will blend it in. And you can see it is blending it, so it, it still kept some of those darker pixels. Maybe I would need to use the clone stamp. This is what I mean by there's no quick and easy way. There's uh, Some tools work better than others. Obviously, the clone stamp worked better to get rid of that dark blemish with that one. But as far as getting rid of any lines, any wrinkles, any pimples, Spot Healing Brush tends to be your friend when working with that one. Let's try a larger area. Let's say I had something like this. Now if I was to go over it and see how well it worked. Yeah, not too bad, but again, it filled it in with other areas that uh, also had more spots. So I'm going to undo that. Another tool you can use is your patch tool. The patch tool allows you to click and drag over an area. So I'm going to select just that. With it selected, there's two options that I want you to pay attention to. Look up here at the top. I've got Source and I've got Destination. I've got Source selected now. Watch what happens when I click and drag over this area. What's it doing? Just changing it. Exactly. It's changing it to wherever I'm dragging it to. So while I'm trying to find an area that tends to match pretty well the area that I had before. That's pretty good right there. We'll let go and it will blend in that area right there. So I can, that's another way of choosing the area that I wanted it to do. Here's kind of a more dramatic thing. Let's say I selected his head. Click and drag. It's choosing that area, so when I let go, it will blend in. It does a pretty good job of getting rid of that particular area, right? <laughs> kind of morbid. Um, I'll back it up again. Remember, we can step backwards, or we can open up our history palette. That's with source selected. Check out what destination does. Destination, on the other hand, will allow you to copy whatever you have, and it will blend in wherever you move it to. So if I let go, now that selection that I made was blended into the background that you have. So you can have fun with it, or you can do uh, some very serious, easy work with it. Let's undo and step backwards to get rid of that. So larger areas, I would use your patch tool. Smaller areas, See if the patch tool will work well with this. Smaller areas, I would use some of your clone stamping tools. Change it back to source. I let go. Pretty good. Still didn't blend in that particular area. That's taken off from there. Cool. Let's try another one. I'm going to open up the parents one. There it is, Photoshop. Now with the parents, Let's see. What I want to do with this one is I want to convert it to true black and white. Right now it's what's called a sepia tone. It's got this kind of dark brown to it. If I really wanted to do a good job, I want to turn this into black and white. And this was the first one that I showed you up uh, on your first page. We can go to adjustments. And one of the adjustments is to desaturate the area. I'm going to desaturate the color, take all the color away from it. And so now I've got a true black and white. So what do you think? Too dark, too light, too gray? Too gray, too middle tone. Let's see what happens under my levels. Yeah, look at all those middle grays. Nothing too dark, nothing too light. If I make it pop, much, much better. I could even adjust my midtones a little bit more. If I wanted to, 
I can make certain areas a little bit darker and certain areas a little bit lighter. I'm going to zoom in on her face. Let's see if I can work through this. If I was a professional photographer, I want the face to be able to stand out. I want it to, to look three-dimensional. The, the worst kind of photographs, if you've ever taken a photograph of yourself or a friend and the flash goes off and your face looks completely white or completely flat, have you ever experienced that? Okay, what's happening is you're not able to see the uh, definite chin. The chin's not pointing out and your nose isn't pointing out. So if I was a professional photographer, I would want to make sure that the chin has a good dark area, sometimes even the side of the face, and definitely under the nose and the side of the nose. If I wanted to make those areas darker or lighter, this is where your dodge and burn tools come in handy. And I found those that's hiding under my sponge. We're not going to use the sponge because that uh, allows you to add color. The burn tool, think about uh, burning a piece of paper. Does it get lighter or darker? It gets darker. So the burn tool works like a paintbrush. I can make it smaller. So once I set the size, I also need to uh, set the range and the highlights. So right now, or excuse me, the range and the exposure. Right now it's only affecting either shadows, midtones, or highlights. This area is kind of in the shadow area, so I'm going to set it to shadows. I'll keep my exposure at 16. We'll see what happens. If I click over it and drag, see how it's getting lightly darker? It may take a few passes, but I can make that area get dark, dark, dark as I need it. I can go too far if, if uh, necessary. If I was to change my exposure at the very top, let's bring our exposure way up. Within one click, I can get very, very dark. So the exposure, undo burn, is how quickly it's getting darker and the range is what area, the lights, the middles, or the dark areas. So if the burn tool makes things darker, the dodge tool is going to make things lighter. With this one, it works much the same. I can set the size of it. I can set my range and my exposure. And I can click on areas and make the cheekbones, things, uh, and the, the ridge of the nose, those need to stand out a little bit more. And I can make them highlight a little bit from that. Same way with the exposure. If I set my exposure too high, it's going to be blown out very, very quickly. Make sense? I'll edit and undo that one. Let me scroll down to him. So if I needed to fix him, maybe his, whoa, way too much. Undo. Just the exposure. Maybe I'll work on midtones for him. Just very, very lightly, very subtly, you want to make one area lighter or darker bring out his chin, maybe swap back over to my burn tool, let one side be a lot darker. I'm going quick on that. Let's see, we'll zoom back out. Command zero will center it up for me. Once I've got that, how would y'all take care of all these little dots? Which tool do you think would be best? Spot healing tool would be best. Spot healing, I can simply click on an area, dots tend to disappear all on their own. So this is what I mean by it being more of an art than a step-by-step -step science. It takes a little while, but very quickly you can do that. Now, I've got it in black and white. How can I add color back to it? Because I want to have that nice uh, deep sepia tone. Here's, how, here's the second thing to do, uh, specifically for this one, how to colorize a photograph. So I've got it. I'm going to go back up to image adjustments, and this time we're going to add a photo filter. The photo filter allows you to filter in a specific color. Um, by default, you can make a color uh, or a color photograph warmer or cooler based on one of these, but another one is the sepia. Where is sepia? There it is. With it selected, so this is kind of the area of brown, I can change the density of it and then bring back some of the brown that I'm working with from that one. All cool? Very simple. Like I said, that's again underneath the adjustments under the image drop down tab. Let's see, we'll go back, close that one out as well. And I'll save it and close this one out. And we'll save it too. So if I was looking at this one, how would y'all, you tell me what you would do to, to fix it up. 
Well, first of all, what's wrong with it? There's lines in it, crease lines in it. What what tool best fixes lines? Spot healing brush tool, yeah. What else do you see wrong with it? Color, how's it wrong? How could it be better? Okay, mid-tones, color, um, the, the range of it, contrast of it. Cool, I'm gonna leave that up to you and see how you would be able to work with this one as well. Here's the last thing. This is the one that's gonna be a bonus. You don't have to do this one if you do not want to. There's one technique that I haven't gone over just yet, so I'm not gonna let this be due today or even due next time. Uh, um, I'll give you a lot longer to work on this one. But for this one, what you would need to do is to select the pieces and move them back into place. Our next project, we're going to talk about the selection tools and how you can actually select and move things around. But once you move these back into place, it's simply a matter of using your healing brush tools, using your uh, dodge and burn to reconnect and get rid of the lines once they're placed together. Pretty cool? Like I said, this is just going to be a bonus, so if you don't finish this one or don't want to do this one, totally up to you. I will give you 10, 10 bonus points on any, um, any future uh, what am I saying? Trying to say, quiz that we're going to have coming up as well. 10 bonuses is a lot, lot to go for. Um, when you are finished, here's where you can upload the bonus broken one. Here's where you can upload the photo restorations. One last thing to do, if you're following along on the, the first page of the handout, here's how I want you to turn it in. So when I click on Photo Restorations to turn these in, I'm asking you to upload a single zipped file, a single compressed file. Here's how to do that. Rather than uploading all of these one at a time, I've got them saved into this folder, right? So everything is inside of here. Here's how to compress, how to make a zip file of this folder. Select the folder, hold down your control key and click on it and one of the options is to compress whatever folder you've got selected. When I do that, it'll make a copy of it. In this case, it'll be named whatever to. This file is what I want you to upload to Moodle once you're finished. Upload a zipped file because they'll all be in the same folder together. Make sense? Okay. Any questions? I know I went really quick on using those tools. But like I said, very, very simple. It's just a matter of jumping in and kind of figuring out what they do for you. I'll turn your computer over to you, let you all get started.